61, we have an embedded function in f of x cubed. So if I'm going to differentiate p, I differentiate the outside first, and I multiply it by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3x squared. And then establishing the derivative at x equals 1, well, I have to work out 1 cubed first. Well, that's just 1. And times it by 3 times 1 squared. And that's just going to be 3. Now, at this point, I still need to use my table because I need I have my input of 1. I need my output of f prime. So the f prime value at x equals 1. So f prime at x equals 1 is going to be equal to 2. So then going here, I can replace that f prime value with 2 times 3, so the answer is going to be 6. This last one here is a little bit complicated because we have here, s is not a function of f, but an inverse function of f. So if, there, if this is a case, I can write it like this. I have, I know that my input is x of the inverse function, my output is s of x. Okay, so there's my input, there's my output, so that's the inverse. That's going in this direction. Well, that means then that going in this direction must be my f of x function. And I, I don't have the inverse, but I have the f of x. So I know my f of x works in this direction. And what it means then is I can just flip this around. My input is going to be s of x, the so f of s of x. The output of the f function will be x. So I'm just flipping my x and y's around here. Well, now at least I have something I can differentiate. I couldn't differentiate this because I don't know what that is. But I can differentiate this because I know what f is. And we can just do our notation for s of x. So f prime s of x. This is an embedded function, so I need to apply the chain rule. So s prime of f, s of x is equal to, and implicitly I have to differentiate the x, well, the derivative of x is equal to 1. Well, this is going to allow me then to solve for s prime. There's my s prime expression. s prime of x is equal to 1 over f prime of s of x. So I'm being asked to solve, find the derivative at x equals 3. So I'm trying to find s prime at 3. That means I need to plug in 1 over s of 3. Okay, so I need to find the s of 3 value. Well, s of 3, well what is s of 3? Basically I need to know, I need to basically find s of 3, so if I just go up here, I need to know the output s of 3 here, and that's when the input here is x, but I don't know this function. So that's a bit of a problem going in that direction. However, if I look at it from a slightly different perspective, well, I, don't, I can't use the inverse function because I don't know what it is. But I do have the original function, and I can just remap it like this. So instead of having my input x and my output s of 3, or my input of 3, sorry, this should be 3, my input of 3 and output of s of 3, I could think of it in the reverse. If I put it through the f function, which I actually have a table for, I don't have a table for the inverse, but I have a table for the f of x. If I input s of 3, my output is 3. Well, if I can find an output of 3, then I can map it backwards to the input function, or input variable of f of x. And that would give me the s of 3 value. So this really is my output. Okay, although it's an input going this way, this is really my output value through the f function. Well, I have my table for my f function. And what I'm going to look for is an output of 3. There it is. I go through my f function. My output is 3. What does that map onto? That maps onto an input of 1. So f of 1 equals 3, that means that if f of 1, this must be 1, 
for me to get an output of 3, that means that the s of 3 value must be equal to 1. So now I have, I can replace that s of 3 now with the appropriate number, and then I can apply it to my table again. So 1 over f prime s of 3 by working backwards and using the f function, not the, the inverse, to understand how it maps forward and backwards like this, I get a value of 1 for s of 3. That means that, well, now I can go back to my table and look for f prime of 1. My table f prime of 1 is equal to 2. So then this is equal to 1 over 2. So the derivative or slope value at x equals 3 of the s function is 1 half. Okay, so then the answer is D.